Hi, welcome to my video that is going to go through the non-fatal offences against the person. So I just want to do a really quick summary. So this isn't going to be very detailed. You can add the detail to this later on. For example, case examples are really, really key here. What I wanted to try and do was show the difference between the different offences so that you can apply them properly, accurately and effectively. So a typical AO2 question on non-fatals against the person will have a number of incidents happening between a defendant and a victim. And your job is to correctly identify the offence that is maybe going on, describe the law in that area, explain each of the elements of that crime and then apply them to the scenario. We sometimes hear of this called idea. So the very first thing that you need to be able to do is identify the crime correctly. If you don't identify the crime correctly, you're going to go on the completely wrong path. Now, there is wiggle room in the exam and there are many offences that could be one of two and you'll get credit no matter which one you pick as long as you explain your rationale. So what should we be looking for in an exam scenario? Have a look first off at the incidents that have happened to the victim. What has actually happened to the victim? First, maybe the victim hasn't been touched at all. That's really important. There's been no physical contact, but perhaps words or gestures have been used towards the victim. If that's the case, then the offence you need to describe and explain and apply is assault. So assault is a summary offence, so it's not a very serious offence with a maximum sentence of six months according to the Criminal Justice Act 1967. Remember though, the offence itself is defining common law. The actus reus, put very simply, is doing something, an act or an omission, which makes the victim apprehend immediate unlawful force. So apprehend just means expect. I don't really like using the word fear because fear implies they're scared. You don't have to be scared. If someone tries to lick you, you might not be scared, for example, or if they threaten to kiss you, you may not be scared, but you may be expecting force that's not okay. It has to be an immediate threat. And remember that is very much based on the circumstances. So in the case of Smith versus walking, um, the, the fact that he was outside the, the door was immediate enough. And they have to be making you expect unlawful force. So remember, force can, of course, be applied lawfully, for example, um, with your consent, like a, a kiss from your, your loved ones, or it could be in sport, um, when you're playing contact sports such as rugby, it could be medical treatment, like an operation or, or an examination. So it has to make you expect that unlawful force is coming your way. But remember, there is no touching. This is assault. The required mens rea, this is what we call a basic level offence. Basic offences can be done either through intention or recklessness. So you, the defendant must have either intended to make the victim apprehend immediate lawful force or they were reckless in their actions, making them expect immediate lawful force, uh, unlawful force. And remember, recklessness just means you realise the risk of something happening, but you decide to go ahead anyway. So you realise through your actions that person could fear force, but you go ahead and do it anyway. If there's been a touch, and it can be just a very, very minor touch, even just a touch of the skin, or perhaps it might be a very, very minor harm, like a, a, a graze or a bump or a small bruise, um, or up to a sort of quite minor black eye. The criminal justice charging standard um, from the CPS gives some indication on this. If there's been touching, then it is battery. So this is also a summary offence with a maximum six month sentence. Assault and battery usually occur together, which is why they come under the umbrella term common assault. There are times, of course, where you may not have an assault and battery together. So for example, if you're hit from behind, you won't have apprehended the force before it's applied to you. The actus reus of battery is simply applying unlawful force to the victim. So perhaps you threatened it here, you do it here. You hit, you slap someone, you grab someone. The mens rea for this, because it's another basic intent offence, is that you either intended to apply force or you were reckless as to it occurring. Now remember, throughout this, 
Think about the person's words as well. You can use negating words to negate an assault. So for example, you might shake your fist at someone, which seems to be an assault, and you say, I would beat you up if the teacher wasn't here. While you're making a gesture, your words actually confirm that the victim is in fact safe and has no need to fear immediate unlawful force. Therefore, there wouldn't be an assault. Now we're getting more serious and these offences are regulated by the Offences Against the Person Act 1861. They are statutory, not common law. The big question, and this can be a very difficult one for the CPS to decide, is whether we caused some harm to the victim or serious harm. Now remember, this harm can be physical. So for example, um, a, a minor broken bone or more serious bruises, scratching, things like that. Or it could be psychological. So we've seen that in a number of cases, for example, in Constanza, stalking harassment cases, or it could even be biological. So we have seen cases like DICA come through which involves sexually transmitted diseases. It'll be very interesting to see as there's been a number of cases concerning people threatening or applying coronavirus germs to others. So they would likely fall under this umbrella as well. Now, if some harm has occurred, so harm that causes health or discomfort to the victim, then that's section 47 ABH or actual bodily harm. This is a tribal either way offence and you can get up to five years. So now we've had a bit of a jump from six months. Now, this is where it gets a little complicated. What is the actus rea? Uh, sorry, actus rea. It's where we have an assault or battery that leads to some harm. So essentially we have either one of these, but harm has actually occurred. I think the case of Ava Savage is an excellent example of this. In Savage, she went to throw a drink over the woman she was arguing with. Now, if you just swill someone, that's going to be battery, applying unlawful force, but they're unlikely to be harmed, just a bit soaked. However, she dropped the glass at the same time and injured the victim. So now we had a battery, the swilling, that led to some harm, and that automatically makes it a much more serious offence. Now, the mens rea element is the mens rea for the basic crime only. So all we need is the mens rea for assault or the mens rea for battery. There is no extra requirement to foresee any harm. And that's something sometimes students struggle with. So for example, in R versus Savage, all she wanted to do was throw the drink over the woman. All she wanted to do was a battery, but that battery led to some harm. However, the actus reus and the mens rea is satisfied because she had the mens rea for battery. She intended to apply force. It doesn't matter that she never wanted to hurt the other woman. Hurt occurred, so it is more serious. Finally, we have the more serious bracket of offences. And these can actually be done in two separate ways. The first is the one that most stu students seem to remember and understand, causing a wound. However, you can also commit this by causing serious harm. Now, it really is a matter for you in the exam to decide if someone's injuries are some, trivial, they've, they've suffered some hurt, or if you think they've been seriously hurt. Now, that can also depend on the age and vulnerability of the victim. So, for example, uh, a, a broken arm might be something that is very serious in a baby, for example. So if you broke a baby's arm, that is much more likely to fall into this category. So this could be dislocated limbs, fractured skull, serious bleeding, uh, in, internal injuries. A wound, of course, as we'll see in the moment, is a slightly different thing. So if you cause someone serious harm, that is GBH or grievous bodily harm to use the, the 1861 language. If you've wounded someone, that is wounding. They are two separate offences. They are two separate things. So serious harm is GBH, a wound is wounding. Now, what are those things? Well, quite simply, GBH is where you inflict serious harm on someone and inflict is the same as causing. So you've got to cause serious harm to another. To commit a wound, to be guilty of wounding, 
you have, must have broken the top two layers of skin, and that was seen in the case of JCC versus Eisenhower. The, the pellet went into the person's eye, but it didn't break the top two layers of skin, therefore it is not a wound. However, I think we'd all agree there would be GBH. Shooting someone in the eye is certainly inflicting serious harm. So I suppose in JCC versus Eisenhower, it didn't really matter which we decided it was. It's simply an academic decision of, is it GBH or is it wounding? So if you stab someone, that is a wounding. If, if you were to push someone down the stairs and they um, dislocate their shoulder, that is likely to be GBH, but they're still in that top category of seriousness. Now you'll notice I haven't yet discussed what law this offence is under, and that's because it depends on the mens rea, all right? So if you think someone has caused serious harm or has wounded someone, in order to decide what offence it's going to be charged under, you need to look at their state of mind, their mens rea. So section 18 is a specific intent offence. It's the only specific intent offence that we look at here. And that means you must have the specific intent for that crime. In other words, they must have specifically intended serious harm or a wound. Now think about that. That is a very serious thing. You wanted to cause serious harm to someone and you caused serious harm to someone. That is very, very serious. So that is section 18. It's an indictable offence, our more serious one, and the maximum sentence is life. Now remember that is discretionary. The only mandatory life sentence is given for murder, but it's discretionary. So if the judge thinks it's very serious, they can give you life or they can give you any other sentence. But remember this person has intended serious harm and, and done it, or they've intended to wound and they've done it. So for example, if I tell someone I'm angry at X, I'm gonna go stab them and then I stab them, it's quite clear that I intended a wound, so I will be guilty of section 18 wounding. However, if I tell someone, oh, I've had a fallout with Y, I'm going to go break their legs and disable them. If I then go do that, then that is me clearly intending serious harm and I'll be guilty of section 18 GBH. So section 18 GBH and section 18 wounding are two slightly different things. Now, it might be that person didn't mean to cause serious harm. They meant to cause some harm, but it got really out of hand. So, for example, you said, I'm going to push that person. They end up falling down the stairs and then they break their legs and they're, they're disabled, for example. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to cause serious harm. But did I intend some harm? Well, yes, I pushed them down the stairs. Was I reckless that there may be some harm? At the very least. So I would be guilty of section 20 GBH. Now, section 20 GBH is a tribal either way offence and has only a five year maximum sentence. So there is a massive difference between these two offences. It's very strange that section 20 has the same sentence as section 47 when they've caused much more serious harm. But remember the state of mind of this person. They meant to cause some harm, but nothing serious. I suppose, of course, as a strong deterrent message, they shouldn't have done anything wrong in the first place. So for example, if I was gonna throw a drink at somebody and then they're, they're cut, their skin is cut open when I break the glass, we may have an argument here or we might argue it's just section 47 because I never meant any harm at all, just some force. So you've got to look really, really carefully. And actually, there is a number of offences in this. So you need to know about assault, battery, ABH, section 18 GBH, section 18 wounding, section 20 GBH and section 20 wounding. Now, it seems very complicated. I hope this has helped. The key to remember is the different levels. So assault is easy. The actus reus and the mens rea are the same, same level. Make them fear force, intend or reckless is to make them fear force. Battery similarly is the same. 
you wanted to apply force, that was the actus reus. It's the Offences Against the Person Act that could do with reform here. Actus reus is you cause some harm, but the mens rea is the next level down. For GBH and wounding, section 20, you have to cause the serious harm or wound, but it's the next level down. And section 18 is the same again. You have to cause serious harm or a wound and actually intend serious harm and a wound. I hope that helps. Thank you for listening.